A Celestium is essentially taking the best of both worlds from Celestia and Ethereum and using them together synergistically. Uh, where Celestia can provide highly scalable data availability throughput, and Ethereum can serve as a settlement layer uh, and a liquidity layer because, as we all know, Ethereum currently has the you know, strongest uh, liquidity moat. You know, it's the most liquidity out of any other blockchain, especially like programmable money blockchains or smart contract blockchains. You know, it has the most by far. So this allows uh, applications on Ethereum to leverage what Celestia has to offer. Okay, so what does the Celestium look like in practice? You have a execution layer, just like you had before, which you can think of like a roll-up. Right? So you could have one or two or whoever many you want. And then rather than you the, using Ethereum for both settlement and data availability, this execution layer uses Celestia for data availability and uses Ethereum for settlement. In other words, it'll post its roll-up block data to Celestia, where Celest the Celestia chain will guarantee through its consensus protocol that this data is available. And users can verify that this data is available through the, consensus, uh, through the Celestia protocol, which uses this, this novel technique called data availability sampling that allows any node in the world to verify that data has been published without fully downloading that data. I don't think any other blockchain does this, or even close to this. Other blockchains, especially monolithic blockchains, require you to fully download data in order to verify it's available, which is part of the reason why monolithic blockchains aren't very scalable. In this case, Celestia, through its data availability sampling, allows anyone in the world to verify that data is available without fully downloading it. And then this uh, Celestium, this roll-up essentially, would use Ethereum for settlement, which means it would post fraud proofs or validity proofs to Ethereum to adjudicate to handle deposits and withdrawals of tokens. Okay, so how is this accomplished? It's accomplished through this new technology that we're developing. Uh, this is all public and open source. The entire Celestia stack is public and open source. Uh, this isn't like some you know, secret thing that we're, that we're hiding. It's all, it's all out there. Uh, this quantum gravity bridge uh, technology works as follows. That you have your rollup here listed as an L2 operator. You have your rollup. And it does two things. One is that it will produce some sort of proof or some sort of you know, claim or attestation on what happens in the rollup. In other words, the effects of the transactions. And then simultaneously to this, it will also post the actual transactions that cause that effect. Right? And again, these two things don't have to be placed in the same layer. You can use different layers for each of them. You can use a separate data layer and a separate uh, settlement layer. And this is what this does. So the transaction data, which you can see on the right here, gets posted to Celestia. And the Celestia validator set will attest to the availability of this data. And if you do not trust the Celestia validator set, as I said before, anyone can run a node to verify that the data is available or not. And it can verify this without downloading all the data, thanks to data availability sampling. Uh, then the, this attestation, this sig these signatures over the fact that the data has been published to Celestia are relayed to Ethereum through our quantum gravity bridge contract in the form of a data availability attestation. And then downstream roll-up contracts can use this bridge contract to query for the existence and the existence of a valid attestation. Essentially, it's like a light client relay. Just a, this is a fancy light client relay. So in this scheme, uh, rollups will post their proofs to Ethereum and post their data to Celestia. And the bridge contract is essentially a drop-in replacement for a data availability mechanism, which traditionally rollups will either post their data directly to Ethereum, so it can replace that, or some rollups have have used a technique called Validium, where you actually leave the data off-chain, but you use something called the Data Availability Committee to attest to the availability of the data. Now you might say, well, why don't I just use a Data Availability Committee? Why would I go through all this hassle of using an external consensus layer instead of just seven guys, seven large corporations signing off that data is available? 
the issue with a data availability committee and what we're trying to avoid is that a committee has no penalty for lying. So if the committee lies and they attest that data is available when it's not, they don't actually get any penalty. There's no penalty whatsoever. They just get away scot-free. The only penalty, if you want to call it that, is the reputation gets hurt. That's not exactly very robust. In this case, if the Celestia Val data set lies about data being available when it's not, they will get slashed. This is a slashable offense in the Celestia consensus rules, which means potentially billions of dollars is getting burned through the slashing. That's a very strong crypto economic guarantee. The second reason that Celestia, the Celestium and Quantum Gravity Bridge approach is superior to a vanilla data availability committee is that with a data availability committee, users cannot verify that the data is published. They have to completely trust the committee or they have to fully download the data which kind of defeats the whole purpose of uh, some external person attesting to the fact that data is available if you have to fully download it yourself. With Celestia, users can actually use data availability sampling to verify the integrity of the bridge before using it and even during using it. So at any point, they know if the bridge is compromised and then they can enforce the slashing conditions on Celestia. With the data availability committee, you don't actually know that the committee has been compromised. They've compromised you, but you don't actually know it. So this is strictly better than a data availability committee in those two axes. Okay, so now we you know okay, this is more secure than a data availability committee, but why would anyone use this scheme over just using Ethereum for data availability, right? Well, it's largely the same reason why people use data availability committees and why all these rollup projects are exploring alternative data availability options because of this chart. Sorry. If you post data to Ethereum, you're looking at something like a swap being $2 on a good day with low transaction fees. This was taken this morning, or maybe last night. No, this was taken this morning on l2fees.com, made by David Mihal, I think. So even on a good day with not too bad transaction fees, a swap on a rollup that posts data to Ethereum will be $2. If you use an external data availability solution like Celestia, that cost essentially drops down to nothing. It's just a fraction of a penny. So this is why rollups have been exploring off-chain data availability solutions this whole time because these costs are simply not sustainable. They're going to get worse over time as Ethereum gets more congested because there's such a strong demand for Ethereum in block space and that demand will only increase as Ethereum gains more adoption. You know, we need a solution and posting all the data to Ethereum, even if you try to do some fancy compression stuff, you're still going to get numbers like this and it's only going to get worse. And Celestia, through Celestium, through the Quantum Gravity Bridge, offers something that's essentially as secure as Ethereum, but that provides you the low cost of a data availability committee.